many people think of a migraine as simply a bad headache or just a headache in general, but in reality, that's not true. Migraine is actually a complex neurologic disease. It does entail head pain. And for most people that can last hours to days, and that head pain can be one-sided. It can be described as throbbing or pulsating, and it's aggravated by routine physical activity, like walking around or doing household activities. In general, we know that women tend to have longer attacks, more intense attack, and may have more of those bothersome symptoms, including the nausea, vomiting, sensitivity to light and sound, Women, unfortunately, are more likely to have significant disability from a migraine attack and are more likely to go to the emergency room as well. It's around puberty that we start to see a gender difference in the prevalence of migraine. So especially when girls first start their menstrual cycle, we see an increase in migraine prevalence at that time. And that increase further expands over the following decades in peaks when women are in their 40s. And at that point, there's a three-fold difference between how common migraine is in women compared to men. And after that, that discrepancy starts to diminish and goes down over the following decades, especially after menopause. And towards the end of life, we see the prevalence of migraine fairly similar between the two sexes. The reason why we see that discrepancy between the two genders is largely thought to be because of the hormonal influence, particularly with the sex hormones, estrogen and progesterone. And those hormones can actually affect how your brain functions, how it processes information. In terms of the genetic reasons, we know there's over 150 genes that have been implicated in migraine. And women are thought to have more of those genes than men. There are some studies to show that certain vitamins can be beneficial for migraine prevention. And this includes magnesium, somewhere between 400 to 800 milligrams per day. Another vitamin that can be beneficial is one called B2 or riboflavin. And I typically recommend 400 milligrams a day. And this vitamin is generally well tolerated, but it can make your urine a bright yellow color. So being aware about that. And another vitamin that can be beneficial is one called coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10. And for this one, I generally recommend doses around 200 milligrams per day. And this one is in general, well tolerated and can have a energizing effect. I like to group the migraine treatments into two different categories. And this includes the abortive medicines or rescue medicines, as well as preventive medicines. Abortive medicines are taken as soon as the migraine attack starts with the goal to stop that attack or reduce the pain. There's different categories within the abortive class of medicines. We have the over-the-counter medicines, which can be effective for some individuals. And this includes ibuprofen, acetaminophen, and combination analgesics such as Excedrin. If those aren't working or one needs a, a, a different medicine, then there's other options as well. And these are tryptin medicines. And these medicines specifically target the serotonin receptors and help stop that pain and inflammatory process from happening. On the preventive side, there are multiple different options. And I start thinking about a preventive medicine really when someone has more than one to two migraines in a week, or they have very disabling attacks, or they're interfering with their quality of life. It was found that certain blood pressure medicines and certain antidepressants and seizure medicines lowered that migraine frequency. In 2010, anabotulism toxin or Botox was approved for chronic migraine and in the recent years, some migraine specific preventive medicines have come to market. And some of these are monthly injectable options that also work on that CGRP system. 
and also oral medicines that you take daily or every other day to prevent that response. There's a lot of new migraine medicines that have come out in the last few years, and there's several more in the pipeline too. And these medicines are very clean and targeted medicines that can provide relief to those who may not have had benefit with other past trials of medicine. So there's a lot of hope for individuals out there.